Hey, good morning. Welcome to your Resource Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Long night. Very busy. A lot going on. A lot said. A lot to unpack. And uh, I want to do this video as a verification of what prepping is, what to look for, and to verify what you need to do, verify what is happening in times of crisis, what's truth and what is not. And this is regarding the war in uh, Ukraine and the Russian people. I feel for the Russian people. I am not doing this to be mean or anything else. I'm using it as to help prepare us for what may or may not be coming using what is as going on as an example. So if it seems cold and callous, it is not meant to be. So first off, if you are going to bug out, which is a common thought process in times of struggle and war. The people in Ukraine left Kiev and other major cities way too late. The main highway is now a parking lot. You cannot get out. People are trapped inside their cars and are even abandoning their cars. That's poor planning. That's uh, just not taking advantage of alternative routes, if available, or how to get out of the city. If your car is going to be stuck on the highway, basically in a parking lot for 20, 30 miles, you should have taken either to foot, bicycle, or any other small way to get out and, have, and started heading out to that location way earlier than the night of or day of the attack. So that's poor planning on the people that are trapped in their cars. That's just saying there's not going to be any war. There's not going to be Russia isn't going to do this. This is all bluster. You know, Putin is going to stay in Donbass or wherever. No, he's going to take the whole thing. He's going to wipe out the Ukrainian army. He's going to kill all the leadership. He's going to execute all the people that were in positions of authority in Ukraine, and he's going to install his own people there, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, leaving too late gets you stuck on the highway. Not knowing alternative routes out of your city is a problem. Number two, <clears throat> people are lined up at ATMs. The ATMs are empty. No money in ATMs at the time of a crisis. Banks are closed, and if you don't have it, you don't get it. So have money on hand enough to at least get you out of town or buy fuel or food or both. And I understand paychecks are skinny, so are mine. But you need to have cash on hand or, or precious metals. Gold is now approaching $2,000 an ounce which is up $57 at the time of this video. Silver is up, I think, $0.50 cents to 23 Both are expected to keep on going. The price of oil is topping or approaching $100 a barrel, depending on which channel you look at in the time of the reading. But let's say $100 a barrel. It is expected to climb at a max of 155 Folks, that means six, seven dollars a gallon across this nation in large cities. So, are you prepared for that? If you're not, then I suggest you take your empty gas cans, fill them up at three dollars and whatever it is now, three twenty-three it was here in Ohio yesterday. I strongly urge you to fill those up and top off your vehicles now. Grocery stores in Kiev and around the country of Ukraine, the lines are out the door. People are limited to what they can buy. A lot of uh, vegetables, potatoes, onions, you know, stuff for making stocks and soups and everything else are flying out the door. Cash only. ATMs empty, credit card and services not working. So your debit card won't work. Cash only. The uh, Ukrainian government is asking people 18 to 60 
to take up arms to defend their country. Anyone who wants a rifle with ammunition to stand up against the military is welcome to take all they want and can handle. For a civilian my age, 62, to say, yeah, give me an AK, 400 rounds of ammo, and I'm going off to the front line, I might as well sign my death warrant now. Civilians untrained do not last long in war, and they are the first casualties. Okay? Civilians like me make good guerrilla fighters, message carriers, that type of stuff, supply carriers. We are not trained fighters. We are not effective. All right? So that's how desperate the situation is. Now, getting back to what Fearless Joe has done as presidency with his so-called sanctions. Let's break those down and take a look at it. First off, Joe Biden is a liar. Flat out. This administration is flat out lying to you when they said they issued sanctions. First off, the sanctions on banks, a couple of banks in Russia, They've already been sanctioned and are under sanctions already from the 2014 invasion in Crimea. So you're sanctioning a bank that's already under sanctions and is already crippled and you're not doing anything to that. That was a lie. It's bluster. Secondly, to say that they are sanctioning uh, companies who do business in the Donbass region, how many could there possibly be? Maybe one, maybe two. Ineffective. Number three, to say he sanctioned, put the sanctions back on that Trump had, that Joe Biden removed, and now has put sanctions back on the uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Ineffective because it wasn't supposed to be operational until this June. So they're sanctioning something that was never set to be ready to go until June. They weren't making any money at that. It was still in the building process. The sanctions that Trump put on there stopped the building. That was effective. As soon as Putin, as soon as Biden, pardon me, as soon as Biden came in the office, he removed those sanctions so they could continue building the pipeline and get her ready to go and start making money by this June. He removed the effective sanctions and now has put it back on now that they're already almost complete. So this president has lied about being tough on Russia. Now, the thing that concerns me the most is when Putin says, if you do more and you do you go to extreme sanctions, I am going to hit America like you've never been hit before. I believe him. I believe him wholeheartedly. I believe that his intent is to wipe out the Ukraine military and the leadership and take control over the entire region of Ukraine. I believe him when he says that. He is a man of his word when it comes to being a dictator and, and announcing his plans when he has the upper hand. I believe he would unleash cyber attacks here in the United States. Cyber, not military yet. Cyber attacks crippling our banking system or our infrastructure, meaning electricity, utilities, whatever it is, you know, it will be something we've never had before and Americans will panic. So be prepared for that. If you are indeed a prepper, you should have these plans already in place for al alternative movement, whatever, whatever I'm trying to say. You should have alternate plans for every scenario, I guess. Sorry, not enough coffee and up too late. So imagine suddenly your internet doesn't work. You get no news because you don't have a TV and you rely on streaming services for your information. Do you have an alternative plan to gather information? 
What if your debit card doesn't work because, you know, a cyber attack on the banking system? Do you have cash or alternative barter materials that will be accepted at certain locations? Gold, silver, whatever it is. I would start definitely making plans to get ready for anything. Anything. We could be in the dark. So, that's my thought on it so far. There's a lot going on. I'm sure I'll be making more videos. But as a prepper, take note of what is happening there. People are stuck on the highway. No money in the ATMs. Banks are closed. People are bunkering in their apartments and hoping a shell doesn't hit their house. They are calling up everybody that can handle a gun to go up to the front line and commit suicide in defending their country. Know when to fight, know when to leave. Know your skills and your capability of handling any weapon. Remember, you have a family to protect. And if that means shutting your mouth, lowering your head, and saying, I'm going to get past this until we can figure out how we're going to, you know, effectively be a resistance, then do that. Or get the hell out of the way. Or, if you're going to make a stand, be an effective soldier. All right? That's about all I have for now. I know it's a little longer video, but it's, it's a lot of news. So, uh, there's a lot more coming. The jobs market just came out about the same but the gdp is not good not good that means our economy is slowing down in the time of potential world war three they may collapse the economy that's one of putin's uh threats so get ready for that thank you for liking and subscribing i appreciate you i hope this has been informative but Biden right now has been lying to you about sanctions and the effectiveness of it. He's all blustered. Do not look for anything else other than committing our troops into harm's way. I look for that next. Get yourself right with God. It's very important right now. And get baptized. Greg up.